Hi, my name is Justin Chen, and I'm here to talk about why Pablo's claim was kind of odd. At the beginning, he decided to agree with Miguel. He was talking about how breed, like the actual breed of the dog, isn't actually the problem. Kind of going against what their whole claim was that breed specific legislation should be input. And he kind of backed us up by saying that it wasn't the breed, it wasn't genetics, it was more of the actual ownership that was the problem. And also stated by Christian, um, the dogs that do not live up to like the, how fierce they are compared to like the owners that want them to be fighting dogs, they just kind of throw them out. And then he further said that those dogs are 90% or like are mostly pits that are strays that they bring in to euthanize. So again, jumping on the fact of that, it's not the breed that's actually bad, it's the owners that just throw them out because they don't live up to their expectations of being mean and being ferocious. And then another thing was the list, the insurance list that Pablo brought up with the breed <coughs> band, or like, with the certain breeds like Pitts, Rottweilers, and I think it was Dobermans are not are not insured by the insurance companies. Chihuahuas are not are not on that list. So the whole claim that he was saying that Chihuahua should or Chihuahua should be banned, they're not even on the insurance list. To the fact that they are insured, so it doesn't really help the fact that Chihuahuas should be banned. Another thing is the, to help a family financially. With the breed banning legislation intact, it would actually require multiple euthanasias because of all the dogs that would be in the con that would be in California, turning into like they're not allowed to be in there. We'd have to get them euthanized. At the animal hospital that I work at, a euthanasia costs between. It costs between $150 and $500. It can vary depending on the weight. And because of the banning of the larger dogs, the weight is going to play a big role in it, ending up to be on the higher side of getting them euthanized. And if the family is really attached to that dog, it becomes a higher toll because they want it to be cremated and a little paw print or something special. <coughs> the dog's um, Also, with the cost of euthanizing dogs and being a financial thing, it's also a highly emotional thing. As many like families, their dog is kind of their last thing that they kind of hold on to because of their like, like a lot of older people own like the bigger dogs and they get very attached to their dogs, and they end up being very. Uh, it's like they treat it as their children because their children have already left them. They kind of only have the dogs to lean on. So with the euthanasia euthanization of those dogs, it turns into a high emotional toll for a lot of people. Um, with the breed specific legislation put into act, it would put many dog breeders out of business. Just in California, there's about 20 pit bull breeders alone. And then not only that, but there's a, around, I believe, 200 or so just general dog breeders in California, which with this legislation put in, like put in act, it would put 200 people out of business. Also, putting out of business would be dog training. In California, there's over 350 dog training services across California that are actually being used. And then um, the percent that actually they said about how many people actually use their dog trainer, a a research done by the ASPCA, the Association. Oh, the American Society for Prevention of Cruelty of Animals, it's actually about 30% that actually use dog trainers, not just 4% of the people that actually use dog trainers and go to dog trainers to get their dogs trained. Um, and also, with the banning of certain breeds, it's kind of like banning of certain guns. The people that will follow the rules aren't going to be treating their dogs poorly. They're going to be treating their dogs nicely, leading to like not aggressive behaviors. And the people that are going to look for those dogs are the people that are going to be using them to fight other dogs and basically treat other dogs kind of like what they said, biting, like leaving them in the alleyway and just having them fight another dog. Um, also, the people that are going to be owning the dogs that do not, 
the people that own the dogs that are going to be using them to fight them aren't going to be registering them necessarily. So that's going to lead to ending up, they're not going to get vaccinations or neutering. And like what Miguel said, neuter, many of the dogs that end up being aggressive aren't neutered because of the fact that if they do not get neutered, they become very territorial and they go back to their instinctual things, which is very aggressive. But once you get the dogs neutered, it actually reduces their aggressiveness by about 70%. Um, and then also, without the vaccinations and any flea control, flea bites and then make the dog very sensitive in certain spots. So if a dog gets touched by someone in a horrible spot, then it ends up being that they're going to have an aggressive behavior towards that person. Um, the Also, the, like stated before by Miguel, some of the most aggressive dogs towards humans aren't even pit bulls or rottweilers. The top eight is actually dash hound, English Springer Spaniel, Golden Retriever, Labrador Retriever, Poodles, Shetland Sheepdogs, and some Huskies. Chihuahuas, Pits, and Rottweilers all are not on that list. So the banning of those dogs for the sole reason of aggression it doesn't really make sense because they're not really as aggressive as the other dogs. 